So now we have two white rounds here, which I think these are amongst the undiscovered gems of the Rhone Valley. I believe they're very hard to sell because the customers, the public, don't really know that much about them. So I thought it'd be really interesting to try two of them here today. Yeah, as you say, John, really undiscovered gems. They're almost like a wine trade secret. Yeah. Everybody in the trade knows all about them, but we don't really um, find it that easy to sell. I think it's partly that the grape varieties are not necessarily that well known. Okay. And also I think it's partly that um, people know to come in and have the confidence to come in and ask for Sauvignon or a Chardonnay. They know the style of packaging, they know the style of wine they're going to get. Mm. But the style of the, the Rhone Whites is very different in terms of packaging. And as well as the grape varieties I've mentioned being a bit tricky. So, um, undiscovered gems, mm. wine trade secrets. They are, and I mean, it's fascinating. We've got the first wine here is made from Claret, which is very unusual. Mm. And it's made from Roussanne, which most people wouldn't have heard of. Mm. I think in the past, a lot of, particularly the southern Rhone, whites were quite big and heavy mm. and people didn't go for that but they've mm. improved out of all recognition in the last absolutely. 10 years and this one just tasting it before and i thought was absolutely delicious it is i mean it's really fresh and crisp yeah it's, it's a lovely pale color and as you say john in the past it would have been quite heavy and yeah. you know exotic almost um and even a bit you know darker in color yeah. it's lovely and pale quite citrusy and fresh yeah lovely fresh nose mm. there Touches of um, peaches and... Yeah, yellow fruits, so absolutely. nectarines or peaches or absolutely. something like that. Uh, and this is from Jean-Luc Colombo. So he's one of the, the new wave producers in their own. He um, is not um, a producer that's been there for generations and generations. Ooh. He's brought some innovative thinking in terms of wine style. Yeah. And I think you can see it in this Cote de Rhone. Absolutely, because it, it's a very modern style, but modern in the best possible way. I think on the palate there, there's lovely weight. It's mm. quite light in alcohol. I think it's 13%, mm. but it's got lovely weight of that mm. peaches again that you're getting. Absolutely. Good acidity and a lovely dry finish. I think. Mean, uh, yeah, and quite a nice clean stoniness at the finish yeah, as well. Yeah. Finish is, as you say, lovely and fresh and clean. Yeah, but it's the sort of wine that you want to immediately pick up again it and is, try another exactly. sip of. It's a Moorish wine. But that would be a brilliant food wine. Absolutely. But equally with a party, even at a party, you could Absolutely. sip away at that all too happily. Oh no, delicious. Mm. And then the Condrio, if you like, the iconic white yeah, from yeah. the Northern Rhone. Also John Le Colombo. Yeah. Um, now I think that's a lovely example of a Condrio. You can find some that go a little bit over the top. They're a bit too rich, a little bit too alcoholic, mm. and that doesn't work. And then, in, not from Condria, but from other parts, you get very light, skinny ones. Mm. That's got a lovely acidity running through mm. it. But again, I think you've got classic um, sort of orange peel, and you get peaches again. Mm. Um, mm. And do you get any of that stone kernel they talk about with Condria? I do. I think it finishes quite... Um, there's a touch of almost um, nuttiness or peach stone or something yeah. in the finish. Yeah. Um, it still finishes lovely and clean, mm. same as the Cote de Rhone. But um, there's, a touch, there's a touch of stoniness there on the finish. Whereas it's like if you're eating mm. a peach and then you suck on the stone at the end. That's mm. the... It's a... Almost a bitterness, but That's bitterness is a negative mm. term for a lot of people. It, it works. Not quite really bitter, well. but there is a touch of that, I yeah, think. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it's very young. I mean, yes. the thing with this wine is that it could easily age for, you know, eight, ten years, I would yeah. say. Yeah. It's very youthful yeah. still at this stage. And what would you eat if you had a conveyor like that with it? Well, if you were at Jean Luc Colombo's house, he, yeah. he would have something off the barbecue. Okay. So yeah. I would say he'd be having like barbecued chicken, um, maybe fish as well. Yeah. Um, Likely spicy fish. fish I think exactly, shellfish, yeah. slightly spicy fish. It's conjure can be really overpowering, as you say, but I think yeah. there's an elegance to that. So not yeah. something, not lots of sauces and things. I think just yeah. good quality, simply prepared food. I think would be really nice with the conjure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's a big difference in price, I there assume, is, between there is. the two. Because Condrea is usually 50, 60 euro a mm. bottle. 
So it would be mm. around that we're talking Exactly, about. and the Cote de Rhone is obviously around the, the 15, so a big okay. difference in price. There is. But um, nice to compare two white Rhones. It is, and two lovely wines. Absolutely. Thank you.